A few days ago, creative director of Kerbal Space Program 2, Nate Simpson, posted some information to the forums detailing where the game goes next. And after its rocky start, this is good information to have. Also, there's a brand new interview out there between Shadow Zone and Nate Simpson, something I'll be talking about in this video, but also well worth watching. So, what is this new information all about? Well, you may remember last week they spoke about an upcoming patch. we now got a few more details on this, and it's still scheduled to be released in the next few weeks, so no precise date there yet. The patch will include performance and optimization fixes, some improvements and fixes to flight physics, environments, user interface, and quite a bit more as well. Before I touch on all those details though, what about the subject of general poor performance as well as the many game-breaking bugs which are stopping people from playing? Well, unfortunately, Nate didn't directly touch on those, but has alluded elsewhere that they are being addressed. They just take some what appears to be or what's implied to be some significant work. And I'll go over exactly what he had to say about that in just a moment. So in terms of performance optimization, we can see four distinct issues on the screen right here. Main menu loading time has been reduced for minimum spec machines. Runaway lights geometry is simplified. Engine exhaust CPU usage reduced, so that should help with performance there, as well as a 50% reduction in main thread time spent on the UI. So there's definitely some optimization going in already, and this should help at least a bit, although at the moment, there's no way to measure just how much that will help. Unfortunately, the bigger issue of Delta V causing terrible optimization problems or performance problems, as well as the other performance issues, have not yet been mentioned. In terms of flight physics, they mentioned the 12 issues that have been fixed. There will be others, but these are the ones that they're detailing right now. Uh, you can see them on the screen right here. I won't go through each one individually, but I will mention a few that do stand out to me. The funniest, perhaps, is the Kerbal Space Center and other objects no longer follow vehicles into orbit, and you'll see that this has happened in some other videos out there in the world of YouTube. One problem I'm really glad to see fixed is the planned trajectory entering a runaway state when switching between the flight view and map whilst the engine is burning. So like I say, I'm really pleased to see this one fixed, as I've had this one happen a whole lot during my various play sessions. Now, moving on to the environment, there's eight fixes listed here, and again, keep in mind that these are just the fixes that have been listed so far, there will be others to come later. These are generally to do with visuals as well as collision detection. Uh, one thing that you will notice stands out quite a bit is the amount of times that there's missing atmosphere and missing clouds, so some of these at least have now been fixed. And then we get to user interface. There's 11 fixes listed here. Again, probably more to come later on. And one which really does stand out to me that has affected me quite a few times is the lack of orbit line after loading a saved game. And this one can be a real nuisance. I've found that instead of having the blue orbit line, you just end up with a gray line and then you're unable to place a maneuver node. I've also found that no matter how many times you load in that save, it ends up in exactly the same state. So yeah, pretty glad to see that one fixed. Now, you may be wondering why Private Division Intercept Games have decided to release patches at a fairly uh, large gap, in the, or measured in weeks, rather than in a singular week or in days. After all, uh, this game went into early access on the 24th of February, we're now over a week away from that, and we haven't seen any fixes or updates yet, and that's uh, pretty bad really in many ways, considering the state of the game. So from a developer's point of view, this does make complete sense. After all, it's much better to release big patches and making sure they're all fully tested. But from a gamer's point of view, it's a little bit disappointing and quite frustrating. I'd like to point out that uh, the game was released in this state and didn't receive any day one or day two fixes. A few hot fixes uh, would have been pretty nice. At any rate, Nate Simpson did take to the forums to address this exact subject. Essentially then, uh, Intercept games much prefer to release larger scale patches that have had the opportunity to go through QA and address the various other bugs that may have come up in the meantime. So basically they don't want to release patches that are going to break other things along the way. They also feel that with it being an early access game, it's very important to allow enough developer time to focus on other upcoming features. So these would include science, 
colonies as well as interstellar. And that means that the development's team time is divided up between a variety of activities. Not everything is going to be focused on performance fixes and bug fixes. Ultimately then, I really do feel that this is an approach that makes complete sense. If you want to read the full post from Nate Simpson, it is available as a link through the video description, so uh, do check that out. Elsewhere on the internet, Nate Simpson makes another appearance, this time on Shadow Zone's YouTube channel. This is an interview between the two of them. It's really worth watching, although that said, it was recorded before early access release, so it doesn't address any of the more recent problems, but still, it gives good insight into the developer's thoughts and feelings on the direction of the game over the coming months and over the coming weeks. One particular point I'd like to mention here is that Nate specifically addresses the current specs for Kerbal Space Program 2. Many people are well aware of the specs here, they are very high, and Nate has said that these specs are not the final specs, they will be changing over the course of early access. The implication that the spec requirements will be reducing as the game gets further optimised. So for great little nuggets like that and all the rest of it, do check out the link in the video description where you can find the full interview. On a final note then, KSP2 still remains in a very rough state, even by early access standards. In fact, if you're still undecided as to whether to join KSP2 yet or not, you may like to hear the recommendation from Scott Manley in his latest video, where he says he'd only recommend it for die-hard KSP fans who really want to get in early on KSP2. For everyone else who's perhaps new to the franchise, you're probably better off joining and purchasing KSP1, especially as right now and until the 15th of March, this is available for 17, uh, 75 off. So yeah, I kind of agree with Scott's recommendation there. If you really want to get in and learn what KSP is all about, then you're probably better off getting KSP1, especially for its pretty low price that you can get it for at the moment. Regardless though of which way you want to go about it, KSP2 definitely seems to be moving forward, and I'm certainly looking forward to seeing what that first patch brings in the coming weeks. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.